Carolina with Greg T in the morning. On 103.5 KTU. 103.5 KTU, the beat of New York. It's Carolina Bermudez with Greg T in the morning. And she's Hi. here. It's pink. Hi. Nice. We are so excited yeah. to have you here. Thank you. Russfall is here. I know. Finally, I've been waiting so long. <laughs> it's been so exciting seeing you promoting this album and just after listening to it, understanding how important this one is to you. So it's your yeah. ninth album, but yeah. what makes this one so different? Ah, uh, well, if you ask any songwriter what their best song is, they'll tell you the one they just wrote because it's new and exciting. But for me, I took three years to put this whole thing together. And a lot of the times I don't have that kind of time. Um, I mean, I guess I could take that time, but I, I haven't because I want to get right back out on the road. And, you know, we didn't have a choice this time. So what song I loved in 2020, you know, maybe the best one made it and a couple others fell to the wayside. And then it just became this sort of curated walk through life at a time in my life that was full of so many different things, right? Like all of us, we have so much joy and it can also be true that we're terrified. And it can also be true that today was a good day and yesterday was terrible. And, and that we have no idea what's coming at us ever anymore. And so that's, that was all a part of the journey, I would say, of this record. But I feel like you got us right in the gut from the very first track. I, I mean, honestly, you, did you, from the first <laughs> song and the last song for me, but then I was playing it over the weekend and my husband, mm -hmm. I kept on playing Turbulence over and over again. Yeah. He said, are you mad at me? Yeah. He's like, wait, did I do something? Aww. But there are just so many songs. That's funny. That I, Cause I played hate me for Carrie and he goes, well, you're welcome. <laughs> Okay. I think she's right, though. You know, when I first started listening to your album, uh, it definitely took me on a journey through your life. Yeah. And I started crying right there in the very beginning uh, when you were talking about, you know, tell me what it's like uh, when I get there in heaven. And uh, so that captured me immediately. And then, yeah, then it rolls right into turbulence. And I, too, was, was like, oh, my God, I'm, people are going to watch me. And I'm crying here. I grab <laughs> tissues and I'm like, this is embarrassing right now. <laughs> but I, uh, my, my, my question to you, though, Pink, is um, when you were done with this album I feel like you know you put everything into it mm -hmm. and were you nervous to finally release it because you're giving everybody a little insight to what you really are what's going on inside your life you almost feel like you you listen to this record and now you're like okay world here I am I'm naked out here mm -hmm. now nothing really embarrasses me I don't I, I'm just like a walking wound <laughs> walking around the, that's why people think I'm so tough us tough people we have to act like we're really tough um and I'm actually just a sensitive little bean but I don't know. I, I've always been very, very open and I write about all of it, warts and all. And I don't think it's embarrassing because I think we're all going through it and we're all putting one foot in front of the other and we're all having this human experience where we're trying to be seen and loved and trying to love and be better and figure it all out. And it's, yeah, it's just... And I also have the feedback that I get from people, like right now, right? Turbulence, that's the song that spoke to you. I love that because for me, I think your husband got it all wrong. Like it's not about him, it's about anxiety. It's about walking through this sort of tumultuous life. Life is messy and it hurts and it's beautiful and it's all those things. So I'll just, I'll throw it out there because I like to see people throw it back. Well, you also mentioned, I think you were talking about trust fall before, and you were saying how life, just every choice in life now is almost a trust fall. You walk out your yeah, door. it feels that way. It feels that way, right? Yeah, and so I feel like we've all been on this journey for the past three years together. Yeah. yeah. But your documentary, I actually watched it during the pandemic, <laughs> and I thought that was just so raw and yeah. honest. And yeah, do you thanks. think that that prepped you for this album and for what you were going through, or do you have any regrets about doing that? No, I did it on purpose. I wanted my kids to have a timestamp of their life. And I wanted them to see how much I loved them because we all grow up telling stories about our parents, right? And how awful they were in some ways. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, you are gonna watch how much you were loved and all the cool shit you got to do and you are gonna be grateful. No, but I just, I wanted to, to capture that moment. I think for all of us, those hardest, hardest, hardest times, they're prepping us to be more resilient and to be able to handle more and more and more. That's why we don't want to coddle our kids, right? Because we can't anymore. This world is not going to, it'll eat them up. So now I walk that fine line of, of how do I preserve, 
your innocence, but also prepare you for this world. And that's why I feel like parents should all be having conversations with their kids, no matter what they look like or where they come from. We should all be prepping our kids to be kind and tolerant and ready. Absolutely, yeah. I think that that's definitely something you know, that you have shown with your kids, but you were going to... Yeah, we, so, so Carolina, Carolina and I both have children. I have two girls, she has two boys, and uh, I know, I think yours, the oldest is 11, am I right? Yeah. So, you know, we're dealing with this on the air. We talk about, uh, you know, what is the proper age to give a phone to a child or social media? So for yourself, as a mom, how do you police that? Uh, I know for us, it, it was like age 13, we could give them a phone, and then we ease them into social media a little bit. Yeah. But where do you fall on that? And they yeah. see everything about you right yeah for me my kids don't have a phone and my daughter's the only 11 year old in her class that doesn't have one wow and i'm actually going to play this back for my son I but was, go back okay go ahead well, yeah. that's what we talk about you. right it's hard a lot of yeah. my friends you know they they have their kids on tiktok and and i don't and you know i told willow i said that doesn't just just move my needle they're not my kids you're my kid and also you have a lot of eyes she has a lot of eyes on her too so she has a little watch. She can text me if she needs to get picked up a little later or sooner. And she has all the emergency stuff. But I told her, point blank, if you can produce literature for me from a reputable source that tells me that social media is good for you, then you can be on it. Okay. And otherwise, good luck. Fair, fair statement. Because she could be a lawyer. She could literally pass the bar exam. <laughs> She's always right. They'll like, find a way. It doesn't matter that you're right. It's I said... Um, so she might actually find that literature, but good luck. Is it hard for you to take them? Like, cause now you have two tours coming up, which I wanted to ask you about the summer carnival tour, which we are super excited about. And then the trust fall tour. So yeah. how do you decide <laughs> whether you take them along with you oh, for they the go. ride? They do. So they are touring kids. They go, but this is, they've always gone with me. And this is the first time that Willow, I sort of <laughs> had to route this tour around her personal needs. Um, she loves theater and I want to honor her childhood and I want to honor, you know, I don't want to take over her life and for her to resent being out there. She loves it. She has a job on the road. She loves it. And, and this time she'll come back and forth and that's going to work for her. It's going to work for me. Jameson will be with me. It'll be the first tour he remembers. And I'm so lucky to be able to bring my kids with me and my guitar player's kids going to be there. It's like romper room. It's amazing. And then Brandy Carlisle is going to be on tour yep, with you her too. Kid, so her kids Brandy's will be there. Brandy's kids will be yeah. there. It's like one big long Remember plenty. when the dressing room was like whiskey and cigarettes? Now it's like <laughs> ball pits and stuff and frogs. <laughs> I love that. Well, you know, we've seen you throughout the time that we've been in this industry together. Yeah. And I was just so overjoyed to see you. The other day I turned on the television. You were on the Kelly Clarkson show. Uh, you and Kelly Clarkson uh, were singing together. We're a band now. Are you really? I love it. But you know what? I, it got me thinking back to like when you were first starting out, like the 90s. 90s and the early 2000s when everybody was being pitted against each other, yeah. you know? Yeah. And now to see you guys singing together, I you know, know, how far it's has so the industry lovely. come in your opinion? I think enough of us said stop it to where it became less and less about that. It's really not about that anymore. It's lovely, isn't it? It's lovely. It's one of the best things, best pieces of advice L.A. Reid, my first record company president, ever gave me was you don't have to be competitive because the industry is big enough for everybody to win. And so while Beyonce can be killing it over here, I can be on the road in Germany killing it over there. And, and it's, everybody can win in their own special way. And it's, I love it. Also, singing with Kelly Clarkson is one of the most beautiful things I will ever do in my life. That's cool. She is so talented. I get to sing with a lot of pretty cool people. Well, Chris, Chris Stapleton, Stapleton would, being oh my God, we were both, right. That's and, who I was thinking of yeah, in Chris my mind Stapleton when I said and that. and the Lumineers. Oh, I mean, gosh. the album is really fantastic. Thank like, you. I just, every, as soon as I heard the, the first song with the Lumineers, before I got to the Chris Stapleton song, I'm like, wait a second, that's Lumineers. And then, so that was a great song. And then, yeah, to round out Wes's the album voice. there. Oh, so great, right? But it's, and the way that you wrote the song, it's almost like with the drums of the Lumineers, as if you're a soldier going into, going, you know, into your journey, you know, like that's what I got from that song. It really just captured me. I love that so much about it. But then to, to finish the album with the Chris Tapleton. That was it. We were that's why like, I said oh, from beginning to end, so you got gritty. me in the gut. It's, it was just oh, like, yeah. it, it was, I, I said to I said yeah. I was on an emotional roller coaster. Right. It was a sonic <laughs> journey. I am, I am so tired. Yes. yes, exactly. And he wrapped it up so nicely. Yeah. 
Uh, no, going Great. back, you've been outspoken in the past week, you know, uh, about Madonna. You came to her defense, which yes. I thought was really important yes. because it, this just goes back to the whole industry. Do you ever get nervous speaking out about things that upset you? I don't think you have ever in the past. Um, but do I get nervous? No. Have I regretted a couple things? Maybe a little bit. Not enough to retract it, but I, for 99.9% .9 of the time, I mean it so hard. That's why it's like cancel culture. I've been canceled every day of my life, and I'll just double down if I mean it because, listen, we all get to have our opinions. If you don't like it, move on. But I'm, you, I'm not going to apologize unless I feel like I'm wrong, and I have in the past apologized if I've hurt someone unintentionally. But, but no, I mean, we are all so intolerant of each other now. I'm sometimes I have time on Twitter. Sometimes Nobody gets time. a pass anymore. You know, sometimes she has time. I do want but you to the clear the stuff that people say to you online. Too, well, because they're behind like, a keyboard. Right. They're not in front of your face. Wow. Right. 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 Do you ever think if those people were right in front of you, I feel like they'd be at, they'd be fangirling. So they wouldn't even be able to say those same things. Uh, yeah. I don't think that any of us would say half the things we say. Yeah. And yeah. I don't think we should. We got to find some kindness. I beg for that. Absolutely. That would be absolutely wonderful. Let's figure that out. Yeah. We are going to dart for answers yeah. in okay. just a second. Great. Um, yeah. We were going to call it. Do I stand it? in the middle? Well, no, no. because we <laughs> were going to say going for pink eye. And then we were like, Ooh, no, Ooh. we don't want pink eye. You know, we were trying to like work your name in I there. So we were like, slide around on the couch anymore without underwear because that's all I think about. Like, I don't want pink eye. But before we go, we want to remind everybody. Kids are so gross. They are so gross. So I gross. have a, I have two boys and they gross me out and I was like, there's a reason why I'm a boy mom, but you get the best of both worlds. You I get do. I get kids. the best of both worlds. Jameson comes around the edge of the island and he's got his pants halfway down. He's like, can you give me a safety wipe? And I'm like... Yes, I will give you a safety way. <laughs> By the way, it's a great name, Jameson. I, I love it. I think it's bold. It's a great name. Thanks. I really, it's a nice Thanks. name. Good okay, name. so before we dart for answers, okay. really quickly, I want you to clear up a rumor for me Let's because I did it. my research love before rumors. I came in here and I love no, to do I'm my not research. A man. No, get out of here. <laughs> no, I was looking. <laughs> Jennifer Lopez recently said that she was approached to do the MTV VMAs, but why did I think that you were approached for Madonna? First? Yes. I think we all were. We're Really? I think Madonna wanted to kiss all of us. Oh, do you regret not kissing her? I was in Costa Rica at the time, okay. having all kinds of fun with my boyfriend, Carrie Hart. Nice. <laughs> Who's now your husband, yeah. so that worked out yeah. for you. <laughs> Amazing. Well, that's why I was just so confused, because she came out and said that, and I was like, wait a minute. I, I thought... think, and Gwen Stefani was also invited, I remember. Yeah. yeah there was a bunch of us. It was okay. going to be a party. Uh, I mean, there's no reason why we it's can't have that really party now. Weird party too. <laughs> <laughs> well, pink. When the microphones are I off. I have a great J Lo story. I Give was it at to us. Ellen DeGeneres. I'm gonna drop some names. So, I was at Ellen's 60th birthday party, and J Lo was there, and she was in this Balma Balmain. Is it Balmain? Ba I'm like, You're that's a pretty Balmain, Balmain dress. Balmain, that's like Versace. And I went up to her, and I just started petting her, and I, without even thinking about it, I was like, Wow, you look amazing. And she looked at me with the biggest smile and she goes I know oh! <laughs> and I was like you're a goddess she is so beautiful that is I such a J-Lo thing to say I know, and I was like what an awesome answer I would have been like no not this old thing <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, hopefully we'll see you guys collab at some point, but this album, we are obsessed with it. We are Thank you. so happy Thank for you. you. We are, could not be happier for your success. Thank and you. we're like crossing our fingers yeah. that we'll get to see you on tour. One of the two yes. times. So trust Seriously. fall tour city field here in New York. That's right. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Summer Carnival. Summer Carnival. City Field. I'm like, I know I'm there at some point. And yeah. then uh, Trust Fall at Madison Square right, Garden. Right, November, Pink, yeah. You are a joy. Now let's dart for some okay. answers. Are you ready? We I asked think. our listeners okay. to give some questions to us to ask you while yep. we're here with you. So we have some darts. Should Greg I move? T, you're going to be throwing the darts. Okay. <laughs> here we go. And question number... Oh, my gosh! She's amazing! The first one. Go ahead, T. Ask her. Okay, now I can suck for the rest of the time. <laughs> All right, Pink. Here we go. Pink, it is. What songs are you most looking forward to performing on your tour this year? Um, Turbulence, Trust Fall, Runaway. Uh, all of them. All of them. All, all of the of above. Them? All of the above. Wait, I don't... Number two. Let's give her another dart. Here we go. All right. All right. I just caught up. Okay, if you go three for three, I'm going to be so impressed. Yes! 
Yes. There okay, here we go. I'm probably not the right <laughs> distance away, but Sorry. I don't care. Okay. Will we ever get a concept album from you? And why is there not a song with Green Day and Bon Jovi that you love so much? Oh. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, John. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny. Uh, some crushes never die. <laughs> Um, well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Uh, what was the first part of the question? They, they said that you they want a concept album. A from concept you. album. No, I'm too schizophrenic for that. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> then no. Maybe a rock opera. I don't know. Maybe. You know what? The possibilities are endless. You know, we'll not, we, we're not going to put you in any kind of like a corner. Okay. Last one. one. Last one Let's yeah. see. Come on. Three for three. Let's do it. Oh, don't blow right. it. Yes! Oh, she's unbelievable, you really ladies did make and gentlemen. It easy for me, though. I told Greg T to bring in like a big giant stuffed animal. He didn't have time. I'm always the one go. to blame. I'm always the fall guy. I always am the fall a big guy. giant stuffed animal. <laughs> what is the number one message you would like your fans to take away from this album? Ah, uh, that they're not alone. Yeah, that we're all, whether you like it or not, we're all in this thing together. Also, aliens are coming. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for that apocalyptic message, Pink. We love you. We love Trustfall. Thank you so, so much, guys. Yeah, thanks, Pink. Carolina thanks so Bermudez with Greg T in the morning on KTU. Carolina with Greg T in the morning. On 103.5 KTU.